Hey guys, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica. Today's video is a continuation in our game school series. I'm co-hosting this with Ingrid from Mommy and Mia Homeschool Chronicles, and I will be linking her channel and the playlist in the description box down below. Make sure you check them out for more game schooling inspiration. Today's subject is going to be history and geography. Now, before I get started, I will say that I don't have a whole lot of history games because my daughter is only six. There are a ton out there that work on certain different um, time periods. If you're studying like classical conversations and you're in ancients, you can always shoot me a message. There are a ton. I have a lot on my list of what I will be buying when we get into different things. I just don't have them on hand yet. So if you have more history questions, shoot me a message or an email and I'll be more than happy to help you. And as usual, I'm going to show you what would fit inside a stocking first. So the first game that I have for you is Timeline. Now the Timeline that I have is Timeline Events. There are many different versions of Timeline. There is an American um, version. There is different um, like discoveries, scientists, inventions. Um, just there's many different ones. And the way Timeline is supposed to work is you deal these little event cards and you would only look at the front that don't have a year and you would say okay invention of inventing of chewing gum the Salem witch trials and each person would lay their cards down in a timeline and then you would flip them over to the back where it has the year and see if you were right did it really come after the Salem witch trials and before the invention of gum now my daughter is six so some of these because there is a ton let me show you um, event cards. Some of these events are foreign. She doesn't even know the event even happened. So the way we introduce it when we first get timeline and we first play is we play war. We deal the cards and we show the year and whoever has the highest or the more recent year wins. And so that's how we first play. We play that way probably a good 10 times to familiarize her just with the events in general. If she has questions about the events, I try to answer them to the best of my ability and uh, we go from there. Then after we've done it that way, we try to split them into like um, centuries. So we would have like the 1800s and the 1900s and we play timeline the way it's meant to be played with just those cards to give her you know, the chance to win. She's sick. She doesn't have a lot of history background. So that's kind of how we play. That's a good way that you can adapt timeline if you have a younger child to get them familiar so that they can be able to play with older children. Another one of the history ones that I have that is probably one of our favorites um, as a family. It's probably one of the most versatile games, not this particular version, but is the Professor Noggin Trivia I think we own probably 20 of the different versions. There are maybe 30 or more. Uh, this happens to be American history. The way Professor Noggins works is you roll a dice that is numbered 1, 2, and 3. You decide beforehand whether you'll be doing easy or hard questions or a mixture. And then the questions on the back of the card correspond to that. So I would face this to you. And if you rolled a number 1 for famous discoveries, I would be asking you, who discovered over 300 uses for peanuts? George Washington Carver, Thomas Alva Edison, or Charles Francis Richard? And so that would be the question that I would ask you if you rolled a number one for this card. And then to give you an idea, there are things in this deck like World War II, people of the American Revolution, presidents, um, Native Americans, explorers, it goes through and talks about the Civil War. So this is just kind of all American history. Now the way we play normally is if we're doing a unit study, we will do the easy questions at the beginning of the unit study and then try to work up to hard questions by the end. If we're playing as a family, me and my husband answer hard questions and my daughter does easy to make it, you know, fair playing field, unless it's something that she's really good at. Um, the president's one, she's getting almost as good as us. So we all play either easy or hard, but we all play on the same ones. So that is how we use these. And these are great, especially for unit studies. Just look it up. There's probably one for whatever history time period you're studying or whatever geog geographic location you're studying. And they're a great fun way to work into your school. And they're also easy to throw in a bag for traveling. 
Um, we use them at restaurants, in the car. They're excellent. <clears throat> the other one I have that we really like that I just mentioned is the President's one. Um, we bought this the year of the election to go with our President unit that we were doing. And now we pull them out at minimum every year on President's Day. And they have questions like, for instance, I'll tell you the George Washington is, I was born in a log cabin, true or false? My picture appears on what monetary bill? Those are the easy questions. Some of the hard ones are, who ran against me during my first term as president? And three states joined the union during my presidency. Name one of those three states. So again, Professor Noggin Dex, I highly recommend them. Now go ahead and get into our geography games now. Probably my top geography pick, if you didn't watch my fall favorites, you wouldn't know, but you will now, is Flag Frenzy. Sounds silly because they are simple games, but we love them and we have all learned a ton. So this one is the Flag Frenzy Countries, or World. And the Flag Frenzies come with these maps that help you locate where each flag and country is. And really all it is is spot it with flags. So if this card was on the deck and this card was in your hand, you could lay it down and say Germany because they both have Germany on them. We have learned, I've learned more flags than I ever knew. Um, my daughter has learned where more are from. It's a fast paced, fun game, but sometimes we'll slow the pace down and we will call out the match and find it on the map to add that extra step of geography in there. The US version is pretty much the same other than it is states instead of countries. It also comes with the map. <clears throat> and just like the other one, you have all of the different flags on the cards and you would lay one down and then match it. So like here, I could lay this one down because Florida matches right there. And I can tell you right now that my daughter knows more flags for states and countries at six than I knew at 31 because of this game. That is the end of what I have that would fit in a stocking. So now I'm going to show you the games I have that wouldn't fit in a stocking. All right, first up, we have the Scrambled States of America. And actually, if you had kind of a large stocking, this might fit. It's just a little fat. But um, this is a great game. It has quite a few components, so I'm not going to pull all of it out. But it has a book that goes with it. Yeah, maybe I will. Here, I'll show you. It comes with a book, so you can read the book, and it explains kind of the story of why the states got scrambled so that it's not like weird and awkward to be playing a game that makes no sense. And then you each get these maps <clears throat> and you have two sets of cards. So you have these cards that say things like go the distance and the capital starts with an A or B. So these are like your playing cards, and then you have your state cards. So each person will have a handful of states, and each state card has the state name, what the state looks like, the capital, and the nickname of that state. And then you would flip a card over like this, and so this capital, it says the capital has four or more syllables. So it's a fun way to get familiar with the states. Um, Anybody can play this. You would probably need to read a little bit, but some of them are just as simple as, um, you know, starts with an A, starts with a B, and so you could just look at that and you would already know that answer. Another one is the United States Geography Bingo, and this is by Ebu. What I love about this game is most of your bingo um, just kind of, you know, have the states in like a, like a block. And so it doesn't really make it relevant. It's hard to just figure it out that way. But what I love is these are by region. So instead of just having the states in like a block frame, you have them by regions. So each person's bingo board is a region of the United States. And again, like everything Ebo, Ebu, it is really, really great quality. You get a bag with the chipboard calling cards and you pull them out and as you can see that one is West Virginia and it says mining so it tells you kind of what they're known for as you pull each one out of the bag. 
So it gives you a ton of different options for learning. Um, and again, like I said, oops, sorry to bump you there. Um, it actually has it where it is relevant instead of just looking at some state on a bingo card. While I think there's still value in that, I really wanted something that showed her um, where it was because we have things that disconnect it. So that was one of my main goals in finding a bingo. We also have the Explore the 50 States. This is a pretty simple board game. You can spin and move around. And as you move around, depending on the spaces you land on, it depends on the cards that you flip over and answer. So it's kind of a trivia game. But it's a lot of fun. We also have Explore the World. So pretty much the same concept. Spin move around the board and depending on what space you land on depends on what you answer or what card you get. Ticket to Ride First Journey. Now I will go ahead and say because I know I'm going to get this question. Yes, my six-year-old could play regular Ticket to Ride. Yes, we could have skipped the journey or first journey altogether. Um, I didn't because I, I personally wanted the U.S., which is what First Journey is. The first journey is um, the United States map, and that was what I wanted. And I also like that first journey has a shorter gameplay, so it makes it easier to fit into a busy homeschool day or, you know, to be able to play a game before we go to bed at the end of the day. Regular first, I meant regular Ticket to Ride tends to be a longer game play. I think they're great, but I got this just because I wanted this, not because I thought she needed the first journey. So if you have a six-year-old, yes, if you want Ticket to Ride, you do not need the first journey or junior, if that's what you want to call it. They're more than capable of playing the original. But like I said, I wanted the um, U.S. board and I wanted a shorter gameplay. We actually have put up for Christmas the Ticket to Ride First Journey Europe. So we'll be getting that one this year as well. Then the last game I have is Game of the States. Now this game, mm, let's see here. So what you do is you have these cards of places that you're going to go and you spin the spinner and you take your little vehicle and you're driving to different states to take your packages, which are the things that they need to be delivered depending on what that state has as product. And then you spin the spinner again and you sell them that product. So, for instance, let me see if I can get a card out to show you. Okay, so you have these little trucks. And then you have these little boxes, which are your products. And let's say, for instance, you were going to Kentucky. You would be selling them. Their products are airplanes um, and horses. So you'd be selling them something like an airplane or a horse, something that would be helping them produce their products that they're known for. And then after you get there, after you have spun all of your spaces, you spin again. And then this outside determines how much you sell them that product for. So then whoever has the most money at the end of the game wins. And it's, so it's a lot of fun. It's got a lot of different multi-level things going on. You are learning, as you can see on the game cards, it has the um, state, what it's known for, its capital, the when it entered into the union, the its nickname, like this is the show me state. And then it also has a STEM fact at the bottom. So for Missouri, it's with more than 6,000 known caves. Missouri is also known as the cave state. So there is a ton of information just on these cards, plus... You're learning about the products, you're learning about buying and selling, and you're also learning about money and adding. Um, so you've got that math in there as well. So that is actually probably my favorite geography game. It's my daughter's favorite because it has little tiny trucks and little boxes, which she really loves. I love how many different things we are getting in one game with that one. If I was to pick my favorite geography game, it would probably be that one. That's probably my favorite that we own. I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss the rest of the Game School series. We are almost done. We are creeping up on the end of it. I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far. Happy Game Schooling.